This kind of reminds me of the end of that dreadful Jurassic Park movie where the ship crashed into the harbor in San Francisco with all a bunch of dead people on it. And for some freaking reason, there are dead people inside the ship despite the fact that the T-Rex, which was obviously, well, apparently the only zombie, or zombie, geez, only dinosaur on board, was locked in the hold. The charlatan emperor rears his head. You are far from home, Dark One. Spare your speeches, demon. Your secrets are known to me now. Your plans crumble like dust, brought down by my will. You have struggled longer than expected, but nothing has changed. You see before you your death. Know you not that your vaunted device is destroyed? Your hope of controlling Nosgoth lies in ruins. This world is mine. You understand nothing. You are a degenerate remnant of a cursed race, doomed to walk the night as a parasite. Your life is easily snuffed out as those you feed on to survive. My race is but a warped parody of our former beauty. We are, like you, fallen gods, scratching for our former power. We will prevail. We will cleanse this world of your kind and bring about a new glorious age. Die, Cain. <sighs> the Nexus Stone. <laughs> Fitting, isn't it? The very item you used to defeat me now turned against you. You're finished. It matters not. The gate remains open, and even as we speak, my army, the likes of which this soft world has never seen, prepares to enter. Moskov is still mine for the taking. Well, how about that for a turn of events? Cain has actually thwarted the first of the Seraphan Lord's plans, which was to... Have you permission to torment that beast? I need no permission to hate it. Hate, cousin? Why? I hate every living being from that place. I await the moment when all of it is destroyed. Ah, as do we all. And the creatures here. Do you hate them as well? I hate them as well. <laughs> yes. And soon they will all die, and we will at last have our destined revenge. Yes, our destined revenge. Okay. The first of the Seraphan Lord's pro uh, plans have been thwarted by Cain, who. Oh, that's disgusting. So almost to fire the cleaning crew. The first of the plans have been disrupted because Kane destroyed the device. They were going to use the device and the creature that lie within it to, like, eradicate all human and vampire life in Nazgoth. So he, the Hilden, these hideous motherfuckers here, can just waltz in and take over. The device is destroyed, but the rift between the two worlds is still open and active. And as long as that's open, the Hildens still have a chance to get through. So we need to close it before their army invades. Now, the the only army left in Nazgoth, which will probably have a chance to defend against, would maybe be the Seraphan, but the Seraphan are really, like, organized behind the Hildens. And they're not really going to put up a fight. The vampire armies of Cain have been destroyed. Not too many vampires are left, and a few of them might still be on the Seraphan side. Cain's army's been smashed. Most vampires are dead. and So they're not going to put up much of a fight either. So it's really imperative that Cain stop this invasion before it even starts. Oh shit. I'm over top of this uh I'm over top of where that demon is. Thought I could do something with that. What can I do in here to cause a little bit of a ruckus? There looks like a glyph switch or a uh 
telekinesis switch up there. Yeah, this is gonna be hilarious. How convenient that they decide to evacuate as, uh, just as, like, after I release them, so I don't have to go in there and fight them or anything. Oh, spider! Why are you still alive? Spiders didn't evacuate. They weren't here before, but that'll happen. Another one over there. Come on. That's it. You're dead. Oh, I thought you were dead. Well, that demon broke through the front door, didn't it? So I guess I could just go back to where I started. And, uh... Can't do it this way. And just go in through the front door. Oh, shit! Where'd you come from? Where are you going? Crispy! The Hilden that we're looking at now look a little bit different than the Hilden that we had seen in the sort of uh, mural in Soul Reaver 2. They don't have wings and all that kind of stuff. And um, the Seraphan Lord had made a made a statement that their the Hilden's current form is sort of like a twisted version of their former glory. Like the realm that they were banished to obviously had some negative effect on their physiology. And we do know there was some sort of a war between the vampires and the Hilden, but we don't know what the war was fought over. And the only vampire that was alive at that time, that's still around now, is Yano Soldrin, and he hasn't really gone and revealed too much information to us, and hasn't really even given us any information as to how the hell he is still alive, because we saw him die back in Soul Reaver 2, which chronologically took place before this point in history. So at some point, I mean, uh, the change in history that they had made, oh shit, didn't exactly, uh, shit, ah! Unless the change of history didn't made it so Janos wasn't killed, or found some way to bring him back to life. Razael had the intention back in Soul River 2 of getting the heart back from the Seraphan. And, oh shit, bat! Getting the heart back from the Seraphan, and uh, it had the ability, as legends say, to go and restore life. So he figured, like, hey, if I get this heart back, I can jam it back into his chest, and Janus will come back to life. In fact, he lived surprisingly long after it was ripped out of him. It's not that simple. Why not? If we stay here, we will die, that's certain. And where will we go? We can slip aboard one of those vessels. They bring people every time. They must come from where there are others of our kind. What if we're caught? If we stay, we die. How is that different? 
place the ships go to is worse. Oh, what was that? He is the one. He must be. Look at him. He is the one who is working against them. Sir, is it true? Are you the vampire who's been making war on the demons? I am Cain. Do you know this place well? We do, my lord. I must find the mechanism these creatures use to hide their presence in this city. He can show you. Go on. It is there, my lord. That building. I've heard them talking. The voice you seek is within. I thank you. Now tell me, what is that? That is the only way to get within. The doors to the building no longer function. Like so much of this place. And that one there? We don't know. But our stories tell us that is where the demons first appeared in our world. Stories? How long have your kind been in this place? We have been here forever. Our oldest fables tell us that our gods abandoned us here. There are others like us. New ones. Soft ones. The demons bring them here from other places to work. They tell other stories. They had no knowledge of the arrival of the demons. We had to tell them. Enough. Be silent. That building surely leads to the gate. But first, I must destroy the device. How long have the Hilden held a foothold here, while we, unsuspecting, fought and triumphed in our petty wars above? Ah, shit. Ah, no, no, not you. Friggin' demon thing. Die! Ah, uh, well, I can't do anything about that. Let's go back in here and get this. Yeah, we're being chased by that damn demon. Oh, shit. Ah! Apparently this isn't going to work. Yeah, uh, I'm just going to make a run for it. Or a sideways jump for it. I thought I had the jump. I thought I had... Shit. Blocking everything. Yeah, we don't stand a chance against this thing. So let's get the hell out of here. Hopefully it doesn't follow us over that. We gotta find some way of getting over there. That's not gonna work. Maybe I'm not supposed to be over here. Nah, there's a checkpoint up here. Those people are dead. Not gonna help me anymore. Raziel was under the conclusion that, uh. We knew but hairless apes cowering in caves. We gave you all. Did you see that? Ah, they interrupted the conversation. I wanted to hear that. Um. Uh, about to give that guy a scare. Ah. Yeah, there's nothing wrong. Don't worry. Yeah, I don't know why there wasn't an execution done there. So maybe we can suspect that Raziel did eventually succeed in getting the heart back. But, I mean, what happened to it and where it was at that point in history, I have no freaking idea. Now these people that have been here, the original, the original members of the people who were brought in by the, by the Hilden have been here for such a long period of time that they don't even know how long it's been. There are probably some of the original people who were kidnapped by the Hilden back when they first uh, 
when it first emerged in Nazgoth back after, or perhaps during the corruption of the pillars. Sorry, guy. I'm not here to save you. Never claimed to be doing that. Ah, damn you. And the uh, Hilden have been periodically, apparently, kidnapping more people and trying to, uh, just, you know, ah, shit, and she just capitated him. There we go. Kidnapping more people and bringing them into this place in order to... I guess they're slave labor is what they are. And they're referred to as being soft, I guess because they were... They're not used to being worked to death. Not being worked to death apparently would make anyone soft. Oh, this looks dangerous. <laughs> oh. Oh. Hey guy, how you doing? Don't hurt me. No offense, but I just have to do this. This has to be done. Help! I'm drowning! I'm drowning! It's like an inch of water, but he somehow managed to sink into the bottom of it. What the hell are you doing Don't hurt here? Me. I could be like the savior. Oh, there's Seth, there's freaking. There are Hilden in here. <laughs> you sack of shit. I could have very easily killed this guy by using Immolate, but, you know, sometimes this guy do things the hard way. And he's dead. Such scrawny creatures, but they have a lot of blood in them. wonder what the nature of the Hilden are. Now we know that the vampires of today are very different creatures from the vampires of old. Like, uh, like Janos Aldrin's a different type of vampire. He's one of the ancient vampires. And the reason why he looks different from Cain isn't so much a matter of his age. Like, Vordor is, a vamp is an old vampire who looks very different than Cain does, but he's still a human vampire. The vampires of Janos Aldrin's um, generation are are different things entirely. They're not human at all, and never were human. They were born vampires, and that's how they were, and that's the way they were. And it was eventually a curse that the Hilden put on them, as we have seen in the. Mural in Soul Reaver 2, which turned them into the bloodthirsty creatures that they are today. And they and they weren't even immortal before that point. The blood curse gave them the immortality that they have. But immortality as a sort of frightening creature. Toasty! Now the Hilden, they are a, a different creature. Oh, yeah, the vampires. And then the 
since vampires couldn't reproduce, they just, um, after being turned into the, the bloody monsters that they are now, they were just, uh, the only way of reproducing was to pass on the blood curse to humans, which is where vampires like Cain or Border, well actually Cain's a little different, Cain wasn't turned by a vampire, he was turned by, by uh, Martinius, who I guess would have the power to do that kind of thing, being the guardian, the pillar of death, he's a necromancer and all that shit. How did I not kill you just now? But that's how vampires reproduce now. They just pass a curse on to more humans. The... I'm guessing the... Hilden, although... The Hilden have to be immortal to an extent as well, because... If you look at the Seer, the Seer is older than Borodor. So she must have some measure of immortality as well. So the Hilden are immortal too. But where did they gain that power from? Doesn't have something to do with the place they were transported to? Was immortality something that was forced upon them like it was on the vampires? And, uh, I'm thinking way too deep about this. Now, even someone like Cain, who obviously has embraced his vampire side, still looks at being a vampire as being a curse. In fact, when he first meets Siano Soldier, he makes a comment that that the that being a vampire is not doesn't make them a god it's a curse so i mean but even though he's embraced it it's still something that he even if given the choice he may at this point just give it up in fact the majority of the first game he spent all of his time trying to oh shit he spent the first game trying to rid himself of the vampire curse. In fact, that's what he went on his mission for, because he was being manipulated by by Ariel. And, uh, in fact, by everybody. By Mortanius, Ariel, and... Uh, uh, what was his name? Mobius. Ah, this damn monster is always up in my shit. How do we get over there? I know I, I know I can't beat this thing. Even with Immolate, I can like watch what happens when I throw Immolate at it. I mean, the thing, uh, it hits the thing, obviously. It reacted to me hitting it, but it didn't die. No, okay, I'm apparently not going that way at all. What am I sliding across the ground for? What the hell's happening? Oh, okay, this isn't the way to go. <laughs> am I lost? Now, uh, people like Janos still have a sort of delusion of godhood. In fact, so does so does the Seraphan Lord, because he made a comment about that in the beginning of this episode. That they were once gods that were trying to, you know, relive their past glories or some shit like that. We can get up there like this. Yeah, here we go. This is it. Boom! Now what that means, that they were once gods, is sort of like a, an ambiguous statement. Because the perception of what a god is in modern culture is quite a bit different than what it was in perhaps more ancient times and all that. Hmm. Is there a human in there I can charm? If I can do that, that fucking monster will go in there and just start fucking that Hilden up. I'm thinking maybe I should be ending this episode soon. We're at the, what, 25 minute mark? I'd like to avoid having these episodes be so long that no one would want to watch them. Looks like a similar puzzle to what we were doing before. That looks like the breakaway portion of the wall, so I'm going to leave it there. 
Oh, jeez. There's a friggin' building out here, isn't there? Oh, no, it's a spider. This thing's broken. Uh, okay. No humans? Oh, there is a human. Boom. Let's do this shit. Goodbye. Seems like a bit of a cruel trick to do to somebody, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. I'd help you out, bro, but you know, I'm not gonna. I don't know what that did, but I just did it. Tell me I have to go in there with that fucking monster. <laughs> obviously wants to kill me right now. No, oh, maybe this has something to do with it. Well, it, obviously this has something to do with it. There, now the monster's standing on that platform. Maybe I can do this. Being harassed by demons? Nothing a little bit of technology can't help you out with. Um, there is a game out for the PC called Nazgoth. It's sort of like a... I wouldn't call it a sequel, a proper sequel in any respect, to the Legacy of Cain series. Because it's clearly a very different animal. It's not a story-based action, in this case, role-playing game, where you go around fighting monsters and live out a fairly complex story with over-the-top and uh, unusually high-quality dialogue and all that kind of stuff. Nazgoth is a team-based multiplayer online deathmatch, and there's another thing. It's in beta at the time that I'm playing this. I'm probably going to upload this episode maybe six months or so after I record it. Because I'm way ahead of the curve when it comes to these videos here for this series. But Nazgoth is a very different kind of game, which is made, produced by, well, I don't know who, who developed it, but Square Enix owns the publishing rights to the Legacy of Cain series, so they've obviously have their stamp of approval on the project and are, are um, publishing it. But it plays very differently. You're playing as both, or you play as vampires and you play as humans, fighting each other in the death match, and the game has very, very different, um, it's asymmetrical in the sense that while the game is a death match, the two sides that you play as are very different in terms of how they play and their abilities and even strengths. And I'd have to say the vampires are definitely the easier to play as. In fact, when you first start playing the game, you'll probably find that as a vampire, are the only ways you can actually gain any kills in the game. You're going to get your ass handed to you when you're playing as the humans. And that's more or less the way it'll... Uh, it's going to end up doing as you become more and more experienced with the game. But it's still um, playing as the humans. Once you get more experience, you can start doing more. Uh, start doing better. But the... Uh, I may have put that too far away. Yeah, I did put that too far away. i got to do this again. The idea, though, is even though it's asymmetrical and one side is clearly the more powerful, you play as one side, then you switch teams and play as the other side. So I'm playing as humans to begin with, and I play as vampires in the next round or the other way around, and the in the typical deathmatch game, whoever has the most kills, whichever team, by the end of all that, has accrued the most points, and will be the victor. And it takes place in a rather un it's a little bit ambiguous at what point you 
the history of the Legacy of Cain series that this game is actually supposed to be taking place during. Obviously, some sort of time in a war between Cain's eventual sort of um, empire with the vampires and the human resistance, but not the Seraphan. It wasn't the Seraphan or even Mobius's uh, vampire hunter army. But it was later, after Cain had resurrected Raziel, because you have the various, um, you have all of the various factions and stuff of vampires, the different vampire clan, clans, like Raziel's clan and Terrell's clan. But it's at a point when the vampires are horrifically mutated, so they don't appear to be so human anymore. In fact, the Raziel's clan has wings, which is something you really shouldn't have seen until after the beginning of Solar Reaver. But it would have to be... Oh, shit. It would have to be before the events of Soul Reaver's introduction, or rather, after the events of Soul Reaver's introduction, and before the events of the rest of the game. So, uh, I'm talking a lot about this game. It's actually pretty fun. I checked my Steam... Uh, set up my account page and I see I put like 35 hours into it so far so I do find it fun but it's definitely no substitute for a true Legacy of Kane game so if anybody from Square Enix is paying attention to this video and I have no fucking idea why you would be because I'm not so delusional that I think anybody cares give us another friggin Legacy of Kane game a real one I'm fine with Nazgoth for now I'll play that it's fun, and all that. I even bought a starter pack, so it's a free-to-play game, but I'm still paying for it. But give us the proper friggin' game. Come on. Come on, bro. Come on. I can't hit those things, but I know they're gonna come out and attack me. Chump. Ha! <laughs> you can't play as Kane in any of those death matches. And you can't play as Raziel or Terrell or Makaya or whatever. But <coughs> come to think of it, um, there are no there are no vampires from Rahab in that game. None of his clan, which I guess sort of makes sense because there are Rahab's vampires were ones that could swim and. That was their power, and what exactly exact advantage is that supposed to give you in a death match? Now, the vampires in that game can't touch the water, and there are a few of these maps where you have water around. They're like parts on a dock or something like that. And if a vampire falls into water, they're dead. So that is a factor, but it's not something that you really have to worry too much about. So. How exactly is a vampire that can swim going to give an advantage? Then again, they did sort of fabricate advantages for, like, um, for Malkia's clan. Because Malkia's vampires should honestly have been the weakest, most pathetic vampires out there. And they are physically the weakest, but they have, they have certain advantages like mind control. They should, they sort of fabricated for this game, because I don't remember ever hearing anything about Malachiah's corpse-like vampires going and having mind control abilities. Yeah, I can make that jump. I think this one's good. Well, the rising tide should raise all ships. If I can get my ass back up there and flip that switch so the area floods with water. Now, I'm sure Kane would love the ability to swim. Something that he never gained the ability to, even when he became an ancient and powerful vampire, he never had that ability. It was something that Rahab had only gained the power of. Raziel did eventually, but he was no longer a true vampire at that point. He just sort of stole that power from Rahab. Okay, after I get done this box puzzle, end the episode. I've got 35 minutes right now. It's kind of a long one. If anyone's stuck around this long, I'd be surprised. Ooh, mind control time. Come out and play. Uh. 
No, don't fall in. Oh, I thought he was gonna fall in the. No. Okay, ending the episode there. Boom!